What's up guys and welcome to the Rebalance podcast where we dive into topics that matter most when it comes to overcoming struggles, injuries and finding balance in your life. Everybody's idea of balance is that bit different so my goal is to give you different perspectives, practical tips as well as expert insights into what it means to live a balanced life. My name is Robbie Cassidy, I'm a physiotherapist and a health coach and I've been helping people reignite their love for challenge, overcome their fear and find more balance in their life through the process of self-development. So let's get into it. What's up guys and welcome back to the podcast. On this episode of the podcast we're going to look at spending time alone and the idea of solitude and when is it important to do this as well as why is it important or why do I feel it's important and I think I'm, a lot of this podcast I'm going to talk about my own situation because I've been in Argentina for the last 10 months now close to 10 months and for the majority of the time I've been here by myself and I've had friends come and go and stay around and I obviously meet people during the weeks and at the weekends and stuff like that at different times but the most of my day is is broken up between staying at home working going to jiu-jitsu going to the gym coming back and it's very 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 boring for a lot of people i could imagine but there's a lot to be gained from it as well and on this episode of the podcast i want to go into that i want to dive into the what can be gained from spending time alone or are you spending enough time alone and i want to talk about now that i feel that We're so connected all the time, what it's like to disconnect and what you can gain from that. And I think a lot of times when people think about solitude, they think of loneliness and they think of like it being really boring. But I want to unpack the different layers to it and what you can do. So I think the the allure to it, the, the, the attraction to it is that in a lot of ways, when you're in your social group, a lot of your thought patterns and beliefs and that are dictated by the people around you. And it's not consciously, it's not that it's you're, you're deciding on it, it's just that you hear the same things all the time. And then as a result, you start to pick up on those and then you have the same beliefs. And it's really interesting. I was talking to a friend recently who's living in a, he's living in Vancouver. Uh, and it's a, obviously Vancouver is a very progressive place. And a lot of his opinions are very how would you say they're they're very in line with what you would think they were and then if you talk to other people like say other friends of mine who might be living in like texas or who are living back at home in ireland their opinions are completely different and when you look at it when you get outside the situation or when you're outside of the environment and you look back in on it you're like that's really interesting you're a lot of the opinions that you have and i'm it's the exact same for myself a lot of our opinions are developed as a result of the people around us and the news that we see and i think when you disconnect from that and you start to spend time alone you have a better idea of okay well I, I agree with some of these and I agree with some of these as opposed to it being like I agree with all of these just because these are the only ones that I know at the moment and that's something that I want you to reflect on I want you to think about is what opinions do you hold maybe you didn't have them last year but because of the people that you're around and the environment that you're in both positive and negative think of it both ways because obviously you can get a lot of positives from it as well what opinions do you hold now that are a result of the environment that you're in and just I want you to think about that for a couple of minutes and, and really dive deep on it because it's re, it's funny how it happens. It is funny because it's 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 the way of the world really. But it's funny how it happens because you one time you think I would never ever think like that, and then when you're around people and when it slowly starts to seep in, then it starts to creep in, and slowly but surely your your beliefs are formed. And uh, I think when you disconnect from that, and you take time alone, you can you can really start to focus on the personal growth side of it. You can start to focus on okay, which of these beliefs really align with my values? The other thing about it is that I love the fact of alone time for if you're crafting a project or you're honing skills or you're trying to really embrace a passion of yours. When you're around people that you know and you love and that you're close to all the time, your life is so intertwined with theirs that it's difficult to say to them, all right, I'm going to take the next six weeks to just work on this project and you might only see me once a week or once a month for that time period. And it's it's difficult to do that because then the person feels like, well, you're cutting me off. Am I not as important to you? And only when you disconnect from that situation, when you get out of that situation, can you start to, or if you phrase it right, can you work on these things a small bit more? And I think the idea of solitude and alone time is really good for that. It's like if there's a certain project you want to get done, but you know you're getting drawn away from it all the time, or a certain skill you want to hone, but you know that it's not in line, it's not working out with the schedule of all your friends. There's a passion that you want to really lean into, but you just don't have the time in your week to do it. Setting out alone time for yourself is a great time to to say, okay, well, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'm going to 
I, I don't do anything else, but I have time alone. I don't go on my phone. I don't do anything like that. And it helps you then to tap into what you genuinely want out of life in a lot of ways, because it's really important. I, I think lifestyle design is so important for me. Anyway, it's something that I really value uh, designing the lifestyle that you feel suits you as opposed to just going with the lifestyle that you're put into and that you think is a normal lifestyle. I think really focusing on designing your lifestyle and people listen to this and say it's it's easy for you, Robbie, because whatever you're you're living in a different country or it's easy for you because you're doing or you work for yourself for whatever reason. I don't really I don't really care for your for the reasons. I'm what I'm saying is that this is you need to take this responsibility for yourself. It's easy to throw blame and to, to give different excuses for different things. But when you really focus on something that you really want to do, it, you don't you stop throwing blame and you stop giving excuses and you start creating what you want to create. Now, that might piss a few people off. I, I know I can imagine it would. But when you look at lifestyle design and you look at like you do only have that one life, what do you really value? And what would you like to be doing all the time? And how could you do that more? Now, it doesn't mean that you just quit your job and you start doing and you leave all your friend groups and everything and you just start going out living like a hermit. Obviously not. Well, you can if you want to. I don't care. It'd be a good idea if you did that. But I think that if you did start to look at how you can design your life and your lifestyle, and I found a lot of the time when I'm working with clients, this is actually a really important part of it is that where we talk about, okay, well, we have to get over these issues here. Then we have to look at these other issues. So let's say we're looking at like certain injuries or certain pains they want to get over. And then we start to create certain lifestyle that would allow them to live out the, 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 the life that they desire. And that could be that, okay, well, I want to train a couple of times a week. I want to be involved in some type of competitive sport or I want to be, just be active and then at the weekends have a bit more family time. You know, it's, it, but you have to design that. If you don't think about this, I'm not talking about doing crazy things. I'm talking about if you don't think about this, you're just going to fall victim to the normal workings of day-to-day life where you just, everything is, is stuffed in and you're not really feeling it, you're not enjoying it. And I think that's a problem because then the years go by, you look back and you say, that was a shy year. Or, Things didn't go well for me there. So designing a life, and if you disconnect and you take a bit of time to spend time alone, you'll get a better idea of the life that you want. The life without the noise of the outside world. And what it does is it makes you so much more creative. It's like there's a magic in it. It really sparks your creativity. You start to look at certain habits that are detrimental to that life, and then you start to look at habits that are really positive or that work or help you to get to that lifestyle. But you can only do that when you step back and you disconnect. And you're going to hear me saying that loads of times throughout this podcast because when you do really focus on taking time to yourself, you can re- you you have a different perspective on the bubble that you've been living in. And it gives you the chance to kind of dream a small bit more and, and, to, and, and test the boundaries of what you once thought was possible. And I think that's a huge thing is that only by... It's difficult to do that if you're with the same group and you're in the same environment all the time to really test the boundaries you do have to isolate yourself a small bit and then you can come back to it it's not that you're gone forever it's you can come back to it after but at least when you come back you have a different perspective on what's most important to you and what you want to work at what you think that you can lean into a small bit more and certain habits that you want to get rid of i often talk in a podcast with people about certain habits that that uh they they uh let's say that they noticed that they had and they had to get rid of And a lot of those are around waiting for the weekend, Friday night comes, going out, waking up Saturday, hungover, and then doing the same thing on Saturday. Or spending the day in bed on your phone, and then Saturday evening you might do the same thing again. Sunday recovering, dreading Monday. Monday comes, you go all the way through the week, you wait for your week to pass by, Friday night happens again, Saturday again. And that's just a repeating cycle. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But a lot of the people that I talk to that have really changed their their lives are people that have broken that cycle because it does take the days away from you, I feel. There's obviously a lot of enjoyment out of it, but it's short term. And if you look at how you can restructure that, is there anything that you could fit in there instead and start working on a skill that you like, then it becomes a lot easier and it becomes a lot more enjoyable. And then you don't, you're not dreading your Monday anymore. 
and I think that's a it's a bad thing. Not yeah, I do. I, I do think it's a if you if you're dreading Monday, then you need to reconsider what you're doing. Because how can you go through your whole life dreading a repeating day like a repeating process? What can you do to change that around a small bit? And what can you do to look forward to it a small bit more? And taking that time where you go by yourself and you really sit down and you really relax and you really look at your life is a great way of doing that. Now, there is hurdles to it. Like, if you disconnect and you go away... Now, I, 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 you can talk short-term of, like, spending time alone or you can look at longer-term. And this obviously doesn't suit people, especially if you have a family. Sometimes it, it's a lot more difficult to do this. But when you're looking at your three to six months, your six to 12 months, where you're, you've really isolated yourself and you're, you're spending time with only a couple of people, you're not going to every social event because you feel you have to go to every social event. Instead, you have picked something that you want to work on. Now, there's rough edges when you do start. First off, you will feel out of place. You'll feel like, geez, I'm really, this is a bit awkward. I don't really know what to do with myself. I don't really know what to do with all this spare time. And what a lot of us will do, and I am so prone to this if I don't catch myself doing this, is the digital trap where you just get stuck and you're mindlessly scrolling on your phone, on Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Think about working on Instagram as well. You can do that and still feel like you're being productive when you're not being productive. And it just time flies. So imagine it happens to everybody. If you can break that pattern, and if you can break the pattern of, I'm just going to start at six o'clock watching some series, and I'm going to keep watching it until I go to bed. If you can break that idea of that digital trap, where you just put the phone away, and it's not, this is one thing as well, and I had to do this this morning, putting the phone away, like putting the phone down beside you, if it's in my line of sight, I can talk myself into it very easily. Like, oh, I need to do this. And then when I check it, oh, I just need to reply to this. And then I have five minutes have gone and I've started doing something that I shouldn't be doing, like scrolling on, on Instagram or, or checking something that I don't need to check. I said, oh, I'll just check this thing first. Throwing the phone away, putting it over to the side goes a long way in keeping that away, like in giving you the chance to, 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 bre- to break from it really is what it is. But if the phone is around me, I'm so inclined to pick it up and scroll on it. So just before I did this podcast, because I was putting off doing this podcast. I had to throw the phone over in the bed, it's over to the side, and then I can start talking into the podcast a small bit more. Now, the other side of, of when you start to disconnect, or if you do take time alone, one of the, you can look at this as a negative or a positive. In my situation, I've tried to turn this into a positive, in that there is a risk of you getting stuck in this routine, and you just doing the same thing over and over again. Like for me, because I've been working on certain projects at the moment, I really want routine. So I've been like uh, any social event, I've been saying no to. Um, and uh, like that's a, that could be going to matches or going to whatever, going to matches or, or meeting up with social groups or whatever it is. I've been trying to say no to it. But when I look back, I've been doing this. It's it's the 6th of October when I record this. So it's going to be out on Sunday. When I look back, I've been doing this for like, probably 12 weeks uh, or longer, probably even close to 16 weeks, I would say that I've just been consistently doing this. It's probably been, to be honest, it's been a long time. But and I haven't really broken the pattern. I've gone to Cordoba, I've gone to a few different small places here and there for competitions and that. But I've been fairly stuck in my ways. And I think that happened, well, like, if you look on that, you can look at it as a negative and say, well, you're not exploring, you're not doing all these things. And I, I do understand that, but I've kind of made the agreement with myself until I get certain things done, I won't do that. And I need a certain routine to get these things done. So it does, you do get stuck in your way sometimes. And you have to kind of break that pattern every once in a while. And spe- like breaking that pattern does spark to creativity as well, which I think is, a, is an important thing. But you have to realize that there's going to be times that you're going to say, geez, I've been doing the same thing over and over again here for ages. And as long as you are, you kind of know what the goal is and you know what you're working towards, it's not as bad. But if you're working towards something that you have no idea, that makes it a lot more difficult to stick in it because then it's easier to break that pattern and not get back into it. So having a goal and knowing what you're trying to improve on is really important. And then along with that, when you do isolate yourself, 
when you do start to spend a bit more time alone, when you do kind of lean into that solitude, there is the risk that you get stuck, or the risk, I guess, of the emotional roller coaster, where you do hit times where it feels really lonely. And you do kind of have these waves that come along that you feel like you don't know what you're doing or you don't know where you're going. And those times you, you, you kind of feel adrift. You feel like you're, you don't really know where you're going. You don't really have a, a, a compass or a certain direction of what you're working towards. And that's why it's always really good to lean back on it. Doesn't, your goals don't have to be set in, in concrete. But having a direction, I think a lot of the time helps more than having a certain goal like where you have something that you're pointing towards and you know, okay, well, I want to get to this point. And to get to this point, it might be a certain, let's say, like goal in quotation marks, but it just means that, okay, I'm going to continue working down this path for the next while. So then when you do hit those points where you feel you don't know what you're doing, you feel you don't know where you're going, you can always come back onto that same path. And you can say, well, I'm going to continue working down this path for another while until I get a bit more clear on that goal. And you will, every couple of weeks, like you will hit that point that it feels, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like I really feel like, this is me talking to me as well, in a lot of ways. You hit that point where you're saying, wow, I've just, like I feel like I'm wasting time. I feel like I, need, I should stop doing this and I should change path. And it does take a certain level of discipline to be like, I have an idea of where I'm trying to get to. And as long as I keep, even on those days that it feels like things are bad, you just keep plucking along keep making that small bit of progress you keep just ticking the boxes then you'll find then there'll be weeks and months long like long spans of time or periods of time that you really lock into it but I feel that if you don't isolate yourself and if you don't take that time to go through the time of solitude you can often fall at the first hurdle so when you do hit that period of time where you feel like I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what I'm doing it's so easy to distract yourself with certain social things and then the jump on the next social event or to do something that that's completely out of line of what you're trying to get to and then you break that pattern and then a lot of times people become ashamed that they broke that pattern and it, it takes them a lot longer to get back on track but if you can remove any of those distractions around you where like if I go off path now I, like for me to just go all right I'm just going to go out for the weekend it's not really I'm not as inclined to do it anymore because I have to call a lot of people I have to try to organize it um, and I'm not just going to go out by myself on the basis so it's ideal for me <laughs> but it might be for other people it might be different but coming back to that I really think that is you will have this emotional roller coaster and trying to or like you're going to have these waves of, of that if it feels like you're you don't know what you're doing but making sure that you're working with that you're riding that wave makes it so much easier because you know then, okay, I am going to get to this. I am going to a certain point. What's up, guys? Robbie here. I hope you are enjoying the podcast so far. I want to take a moment just to personally ask you for your help. If you're enjoying the podcast, would you be willing to share it with someone you think would love it too? Maybe a friend, family member on social media, or even if you just brought it up in conversation with someone you know. The recommendation means the world to us. And it's because of people like you that we get to be able to, to produce this podcast on a weekly basis. So thank you so much for your support so far. Uh, and I would love if you could help us reach even more people who could benefit from it too. Really appreciate you. And we're going to jump straight back to the podcast. Now, the other thing with spending time alone is that you go, you can go really deep as opposed to skimming the surface. I think that oftentimes we live in this this life of that we feel like we're very social creatures when really our social lives are sending memes to friends a very short text how are you how are you getting on good great that's it posting something on your story liking something going after like share comment like all that all the really is really surface level stuff and you never really get to go deep because they're really sh it's short-lived in a lot of ways these digital connections and, and social media and I think social media is good in a way, but it is when you step back from it, it's so surface level. It's so surface level. And I think that when you take that time that you can go about it alone and you can live in your own time, on your own time, in your own life, the lifestyle that you want, you notice that a small bit more. You notice that, like, it's great. I keep up with a lot of my friends right now 
literally just through sending memes. But I know that that's not the social, that's not exactly a social interaction. That's just making contact. You know, that's the same as waving some, at somebody going down the road and saying that you're, have it, like you, you're not exactly having a deep conversation. So then you will jump on calls with them every once in a while and go into a bit of a deeper conversation. But I think oftentimes we can live in that. We get, we get stuck in that state and we live in that state. And as, as opposed to just sending memes to somebody, taking the time to call them and go through an hour, or talk to them for an hour is so much better, which I think everybody knows. But spending time alone gives you the chance to go deep on these things. And it gives you also the chance to go deep on projects or skills that you want to learn, like where you, you literally do nothing else but dive, dive so deep on a certain project. I, for me anyway, I love that. That's a, that's a huge thing for me. I really enjoy that because I think that you can you learn so much more about a project when you're completely engrossed in it. Like a re- simple one right now for me for jiu-jitsu because like jiu-jitsu and then I'm working on things, other projects as well. Like I'll go, I'll train every day and I'll go to the gym and, and I'll watch videos on certain things in the evening time as well. So I know what certain, everything I do is for a purpose right now or for a certain project, which is for some people that might sound boring, but it's, I don't know, it's, I don't want to use the word liberating, but it's very like, it's very powerful because my focus and my purpose is very directed and there's something about that. And then the other thing is that when you start to choose intention over impulse, so you start to look at it like, are we just living here or are we just live or waiting for the weekend as I was speaking on earlier on or can you kind of start to sculpt that life? purpose and meaning where you are going deep on projects you are going deep on things that you want to fix you want to figure out things that you want to improve on i think it really that idea of uh, just as opposed to impulse of okay let's go here now or someone writes to you and says do you want to go out or do you want to do this or that the other and being able to say no to that it gives you so much control so much power over your life and i think a lot of us do need to take back that control and a lot of us do need to take back that that power over our lives because it's dictated by other people too much and every situation is different I understand that completely every situation is different but if you can look at taking back these little pieces here and there and kind of directing your focus and spending time doing things that you enjoy doing becomes such a better your weeks become so much more fulfilled like people often talk about that idea of living a fulfilled life and I think when you were living in line with a purpose and values that you do live a more fulfilled life because even if you didn't do anything that's crazy or anything that really was stood out or a story that you're going to tell for the rest of your life, you're getting the things done that you enjoy doing and you're doing them each day and you're working towards a certain goal or you're working in a certain direction. I think that's, it's so powerful. And the other thing is that you learn a lot of lessons about yourself. The idea of personal development, the idea of you learn about what you really enjoy doing you don't really figure that out until you step back and you see the bigger picture because we're so connected with so many people around us that the clarity of what we really on a on a like a base level enjoy comes down to those moments where you can disconnect so to kind of to finish up on this or to 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 speak to the last bit i want to talk about why i feel that we should all try to take time out whether it's a week uh, whether it's a month, six weeks, eight weeks, 12, six, six months, whatever it is, a year, where you just focus on trying to spend a good bit more time alone, but you're trying to do it without your phone. You're trying to do it where you don't need to be talking to people, where you kind of leave time for yourself. And I know, as I said, like this is going to work for some people, it won't work for others. If you have a family, it becomes a bit more challenging or you just need to look at how you can restructure it. I understand that. But I want you to take the time as opposed to think of as opposed to take the time to think of different reasons why you can't do it. I want you to take the time to think of different reasons why you can do it and how you could fit this in and how you could take a day to yourself where you don't do anything. You don't go on any Wi-Fi and you just spend that time alone working on something, writing, reading, you know, listening to music, listening to a podcast, going for a long walk, going for a hike by yourself. You know, going for a a long distance cycle or run. What to you feels like I can do that by myself and I don't have to think about anyone else while I'm doing it. I think there's, to finish up, although there's many like positives and negatives 
feel many of us are spending time on surface level tasks and never really getting the chance to dive deep. And we miss out then on the opportunity of deep work. And the amount of satisfaction or the, the level of satisfaction that you get from being present and just working on something very deeply. I think that many of us feel that we're being social because as I was saying, we're just sending out memes or putting up stories and we're connecting through social media, but it's surface level. But then we find it difficult to, to switch off in a lot of ways put the phone down, stay focused on the same task for a couple of weeks to a couple of months at a time. Search just something that may not actually pay off for a couple of years. Like when you're looking at lifestyle design, that might not pay off for another six years, whatever, five years. But one certain way it's not going to pay off is if you don't start working on it. And it might not be that you do it right now, but it might be that or what you're doing right now is making you 1% or pushing you in the direction 1% more. Instead of living for that weekend and you're hating your Mondays and you're trying to cram all your life into a couple of hours in the evening, I want you to look at what you can do that you can work on each evening or each day where you can take a small bit of time to go into that deep work. There's a great book, Cal Newport, Deep Work, and he talks about how all the, let's say, a lot of the top inventors or, or the best minds in the world have this space set out where they just really dive into it a subject completely with no, with no distractions just focus because it does take about 30 minutes for your body to even start to get into that state of focus but if you keep picking up your phone and checking notifications and stuff it makes it so much more challenging so and if you do this at the end of the year when you look back you have something to show for it and you can say you can you can you can talk to yourself or you can build yourself up or you can you'll have a lot more confidence in yourself because you'll have something to give back You'll have a new skill. You'll have a project that you'll have finished. What are you able to give back to the world in a lot of ways? What, one, because the world gives you so much, so much opportunity in life and different essence and, and love and things to work with. But are you taking advantage of that? When you really spend time alone, it, it allows us to see, the, to see the small things, to see the beauty in the small things and as opposed to looking for massive payoffs and social credit. And, and you, you get to see these little little things and the importance of these little things and the importance of being invested in these smaller things. We become independent and we don't rely on those around us as much just to keep us up and for our emotions and our opinions. There a, lot, a lot of times I feel that people who are too connected are finding out that they become a victim because they are blaming everyone else for how it's not shaping the world for them as opposed to shaping the world for themselves or to blaming the government they're blaming everyone around them. But that's just giving the control away as opposed to taking the control back. And I think it's really important to look at being the creator of your own life. It also helps you to develop that idea of character and substance whereby you are more confident in yourself, your ability to figure out a situation or problem, knowing that you've done it in the past before. But when you do that and you do take that time alone, it, it does, it gives you more opportunities to overcome little challenges. And that might seem like, oh, I, don't, I have enough challenges, I don't want to do that. But... It's different when it's a voluntary challenge and an involuntary challenge. It's like a lot of people get a lot from doing an ice bath and doing a sauna because that's like you're choosing to go in there and do that. And when you do, you go into it with a different mindset as opposed to things that are sprung upon you. Then when you disconnect from your main groups or your main social circles just for a while, you can identify what parts of it you like, what parts you prefer to be involved in as well as what parts you'd like to disconnect from. So like really simple one, if you're involved, if your social group loves going out but they also love playing sports, or they love like different activities, you can choose that, okay, well, I'll just make the majority of the sporting activities and i probably skip the going out. But because you're involved in the group all the time, you might not notice that there's two different sections to that group and that you just go to all of them all of the time. But as I said, the only way you will start to realize this, recognize this, is to work on that personal growth, personal development, self-development. But only when you, I guess, only through this connection and dedication to developing yourself will you ever realize realize the opportunities that you have and realize how much influence you have on your own life and yeah i think that's a really powerful thing is when you do come to realize that it does uh, it changes your perspective on many things so that's all i, I want to talk about today I, I guess really when i look at when i'm talking through this this is as much of a much of a journal journal session for myself as it is for for putting out the podcast now but I do hope that it helps people I do hope that it gives you a better idea of why picking time and choosing time to to spend alone 
and giving yourself time to really go into the idea of, of, of deep work and focus on, on a project and focus on a passion for for a lot of time as opposed to doing things surface level just for a short time until you dislike doing it and then you stop doing it again. And in a lot of ways, it's easier to do this by just disconnecting from the group or from the parts of your life that you are able to disconnect from and taking that time to yourself for personal growth and development because when you come back in, you're going to have a completely different perspective on life and a better life as a result. And we need to realize that. Just going through the day today sometimes becomes monotonous we don't realize it time flies and did you really were you really bettering yourself and becoming a better person so embrace it see what you'll find out and let me know what you think let me know what your thoughts are on it have you tried this before are you doing this at the moment what do you, what does solitude mean to you what does spending time alone mean to you or what does a project that you would like to work on or a passion that you'd like to work on or a skill you'd like to work on how are you separate? How are you spending time doing that? Where are you getting the time out of your day or your week to do it? Is there anything that you've had to disconnect from recently or any social groups or teams or anything that you feel like you had to just step back from them because it wasn't serving your lifestyle anymore? Let me know. You can either let me know on, send me an email at info at the mobility tutor or get in contact with me on Instagram is probably the best place where it's the mobility tutor. But I hope that helped everyone. I hope that there was something to be gained from it. Um, and that is all from me this week. I will chat to you all again next week. And yeah, have a good one. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're looking to learn more about what we do, as well as check out any of the mobility and prehab programs we have available, just head over to the description of this podcast and you will find a link to all the programs there. As always, thank you for listening. And I will chat to you all again in the next episode. Have a good one.